Hello everyone, my name is Mohammed Radwan, I'm a Visual Studio LM MVP and DevOps Practice Lead. In this video, I'm going to share my experience about migrating Team Foundation Server to Visual Studio Team Services using Database Import Service or TFS Migrator Tool, which is provided by Visual Studio Team. So I'm going to walk you through a real experience so here is the steps and you can download the guide from this URL. Microsoft Visual Studio team, they created this tool and they created a very uh, comprehensive guide which is explains everything. And this video is going not to repeat the guide but it just to share the real experience and to give you an overview about using this tool and also to summarize the guide for you. So. It is better than reading all this guide is to understand, okay, what is the, 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 the summary of the guide through a real experience. This is the main idea of... Uh, so, as we can see, we have six steps. Uh, so, let's start from the beginning. The first two steps, getting started uh, and prerequisite, which is just understanding the limitation and, you know, the prerequisite of the migration using this tool. So first, you must have an Azure Active Directory. So if you don't have Azure Active Directory, you can't use this tool. You can't migrate to an existing PSTS account because the tool create a new account. This is why if you would like to migrate to an existing account, you can't use this tool. PSTS supports two different process models. Uh, which is inherited, which is, this is the VSTS by default, and the hosted XML, which we used with TFS. By default, the hosted XML is turned off. So if you're using VSTS by default, the hosted XML is turned off, and you need to request to open that. We can't move from hosted to inherited. Microsoft will provide a solution at the end of 2018 as planned. We need to understand that we will migrate each collection to a separate VSTS accounts. And Microsoft later will provide uh, an organization, um, you know, entity, then we can group multiple uh, VSTS account under that. But this is not now. Always download the last version of TSS mig migrator tool and remember maybe you start the the, the trail migration uh, because sometimes the migration could take longer time or long time like two months or three months so or maybe even two weeks in my case in in two weeks there is two different versions so I I I run the, the trail migration on or the dry run with one version and I, I run the, the real migration using another version. So always remember to download the last version. So to, to move to the next step, which is upgraded TFS, always try to upgrade to the last version. Um, Visual Studio team, they give you six months windows. So for example, if you look at the date of the real migration, and the date of the release of the TFS that you have in your prem on premises. If it is your your release, of course, including the update. So if you have TFS 2017 update one and the date for that release not exceed six months, then you are good to go. So in my case, I upgraded TFS 2015 to TFS 2018. The next step is decision and validate. In this part, we need to understand if we have any customization, what we are going to do about them. Would we like to, to keep this customization on VSTS? But in this case, if we keep any customization, then we will go for the hosted XML and we will not be able to uh, transform the hosted XML to inherited before 2000. Uh, at the end of 2018, this is as planned, and maybe even the plan could could change. So this is very important decision to take. So in my case, 
the company would like to have the inherited uh, process now so we you know so I remove all the customization it is very important also to mention that even if you keep the customization and you go for the hosted X, uh, for the hosted XML not all the, the customization is supported the first is to start running the TFS migrator validate and this is the command to and of course I run that per collection so TFS migrator validate and I just give the collection address it's better to run that from the application tier once I run that I got this message about this collection and as you can see that this validating the, the customization the ready of the collection and also it gives me uh, an error that one of the table is exceeded uh, 45 gigabytes which mean that I can't use the deck pack for this migration for this collection and usually we have some logs file as we can see so we have the collection we will we look at the error we have TS, TFS migrator this is the main errors and try match OOP or out of the box processes this is the place where we want to see if our process is exactly as the the, the original process template so so the main idea we 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 start looking at these logs and understanding the error and try to fix them and start rerunning the validation so i just share some of the the examples that i i remove the customization so for example uh, list the link type in this part because one of the error is there is custom link and by the way the custom link it is not even supported uh, in vsds so as i explained before not all the customization is supported so even if you decided to go with the hosted xml you still can't move or you still can't have all your customization some of the customization not even supported okay so the list the link type one of the not supported uh, customization even if for hosted xml so first i need to list the link type using work item admin tool then once i list it i start delete the link type using the link type name i also started changing work item field because i found that some of the field is um, used by another uh, uh, process template like for example this field already uh, named by Microsoft in the process in the new process template so I had to change that first I need I needed also to destroy some work items which is customized work items like feature set or maybe different work items side and many many other customization I need and before of course to destroying this uh, this work items we're migrating this data into a different work items so this process just again you know we, we we start validating and removing the customization and run the validate again to make sure it's okay once I have that now we are ready to import but before we import we need to prepare first so just running the prepare command and to run the prepare command I need the active directory tenant so as we can see here just to prepare and just to give the collection then the tenant of the Azure AD and the region which must be on the same region with the Azure AD so this will generate a file settings it's a JSON format uh, and this file has all the settings that reading that including the mapping between um, the, the Azure ED accounts and um, the, the the original accounts on on the Azure on premises, and making this map. And this is, of course, also you know has all the information. And of course, this is I can start editing this file. For example, I can change the the um, an account to be historical to be an active or active to be historical if I want to disable some accounts. So. 
but once I generate that, in my case, I have two collection. As I explained before, one of them has a table exceed 45 gigabytes, so I needed to use another way uh, from the deck pack. And with the other collection, it was fine, so I use the deck pack. The other way is to using Azure VM with a SQL Server. Yes, yeah, so for the first collection, which is has no problem, then I just created Azure storage container for storing the deck pack. Then I start detach the collection, then create the deck pack file from this database. And by the way, I can create the deck pack from a remote machine on a local machine. So as we can see, for example, I run this command line, SQL package exe, which is a command line tool, comma SQL, uh, and I just run that to, to get the deck pack, which is taking all the database as a one file on my local machine. Once I have that, I start uploading that to the Azure container. I using here Azure copy, which is a command line tool also provided by the Azure team and it's an open source. So I just download it and I start uploading that. And here's a command with the Azure copy. And of course, here's the, the, the key for um, the, the storage key or the container key for the, the URL uh, for the blob storage. So I can uploading the backpack file. Here is the command how I run that. So once I upload that, I, I, I go for my settings file where I generated in the preparation and then just to change the URL to point to the, 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 um, the storage container. And then, you know, of course, this including the credential with the secret key. And that's I'm ready to go. For the second collection, I had to create Azure VM with SQL Server. Then I detach the collection. I, I backup the database. Then I upload the, the backup database to the uh, Azure container as well using the Azure copy. Then I just download it and I downloaded that using um, the UI, normal UI, just I log into the Azure uh, on the SQL server, the virtual machine SQL server. So I, lo I, I load to my Azure subscription and I just download the file using download manager. So I download the backup and then restoring that on the SQL machine. This SQL machine needs some, of course, some preparation, like you, you, you prepare it for the firewall so the BSTS can connect to that machine and taking the data. Then I start changing the configuration, uh, which is the setting to point to the IP of the virtual machine and the connection string of the database and all of that. And I'm ready to go. So now at the end of that, what I have, I just have a deck pack file on uh, Azure uh, storage container and a database backup restored on a SQL server on a virtual machine. This is what I have. This is the source. What else? A two settings file has all the information needed for the migration. So this is what I have. The next step is to running the tool with the import as a dry run. The dry run is a trail migration. So I just run TFS migrator import, then I pass the the settings file or the configuration file which has all the parameters and as we can see that this is the result of the the import and this is as a dry run and the dry run is just a value in the configuration or the setting file the json file we we, we set it as a dry run so once i have that when i access the monitor the import this address i can see here the progress of the import and we can see that it suffix with with dry run so you can understand that this is a dry run account i even name it as a dry run but i found that they already microsoft they already doing that 
so once you open that you will find that this information that this dry run account will expire and be deleted shortly after on so it give you some times to to leave it that so you can try with that and fix any error understanding what is the potential problems and and, and, and so on so once I finish that the first is to delete the dry run change the configuration to be production not a dry run rerun all this process again which is again just importing that rename the account with the reserved account name so and then it is done so this is the typical process I, I, I run through the real migration and the dry run and to give you a quick overview about the summary which the real migration took about 12 hours we started at 4 after working hours and we finish 4 a.m. because we would we we wanted to you know minimize the downtime and this was at Friday so we installing the upgrade TFS uh, 2018 remove all the customization of the project validate the process is ready generate migra migration settings file for preparation detach collections deck back the first collection take the backup from the second collection um, upload the deck pack using azure copy to the azure storage container uploading the database backup uh, using azure copy to the Azure storage container, download the database backup to the SQL server and restore it, change the import settings with this information, then run the import with the production. And that's it. At the end, I would like to thank you for watching this video and please, if you have any question about the migration or you want, please don't hesitate to, to visit my blog or ask me any question. Thank you.